Good afternoon, Saints. Welcome to Healing Class. We just finished a series um, last week on the 19 healings that are recorded in the four accounts of the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And what we want to do now is continue on to the book of Acts. Now we know that Jesus has already uh, died on the cross for our sins and was buried and has rose the third day according to the scriptures and has ascended up into heaven and is now sitting on the right hand of God making intercessions for you and for me. And these apostles that Jesus has chosen, these 12 apostles, um, one of them he chose was Judas who betrayed him. And um, we find out in that first chapter of the book of Acts, they actually replaced him with somebody else. Now, we want to look at the third chapter here. This is uh, one of the healings recorded in the book of Acts. Acts the third chapter, the first verse. And what we want to do before we start that, we want to talk to our Father. Uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the God we're talking to tonight. We thank you for letting us come over here and get your word out to the people. We thank you just for using us. It's not because we have did anything special and we haven't made no mistakes and nothing like that. We're just as normal as anybody else on this earth. But we thank you that you have given us this ministry and we want to do the very best that we can. We want to get this word out and we want to deliver it the same way you told it to us. And we pray that you will forgive us of our sins yes. as we forgive those who have sinned against us. We ask that you will lead us and guide us by your Holy Spirit, that your Holy Spirit will bring everything to remembrance, whatsoever you have told us. And we thank you so very much in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Starting at Acts, the third chapter, the first verse, recorded here. Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, three o'clock p.m. And a man who had been unable to walk from birth was being carried along, whom they used to set at set down every day at that gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, so that he could beg alms from those entering the temple. So when he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he began asking them for corn. But Peter, along with John, stared at him intently and said, Look at us. And the man began to pay attention to them, eagerly expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you. In the name, authority, power of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, begin now to walk and go on walking. Then he seized the man's right hand with a firm grip and raised him up. And at once his feet and his ankles became strong and steady. And with a leap he stood up and began to walk. And he went into the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God. And they recognized him as the very man who usually sat begging for coins at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement and were mystified at what had happened to him. Now, we see here in this first verse. Peter and John was going up 
together into the temple at the hour of prayer. Yes. Now, Peter, we first uh, saw Peter in the Gospels when he got called into the ministry. And what Jesus was doing, he was teaching that day. And he asked, there were so many people that he asked Peter that he used his boat, you know, to get away from, you know, a little bit from the shore so they wouldn't trample him. Uh -huh. And, and teach. And then right. once he got through teaching, uh, he told Peter uh, to go back and, and catch some fish. Right. And Peter was thinking, well, I have been fishing all night and I haven't caught anything. Right. And so Jesus told him, well, just go on out there and throw your net on the right side. Mm. And he did what Jesus told him to do. He said, nevertheless, I'll do it anyway. Right. And when he done it, he caught a great load of fish. Right. It was too much for his net. Others had to come over. That was Peter. And then Peter, after that, he started following Jesus. Right. Now, Peter was a, a normal working man. He was a fisherman. Right. John was partners with Peter. He was a fisherman too. Yes. Now, these two men were part of the inner circle with Jesus. Because when Jesus was in the mountain of transfiguration, he took with him on that mountain uh, Peter, John, and James. Yes. And they actually saw him transfigured on that mountain. And he told them, don't tell nobody. Right. Now, they was always with Jesus all the way up until he was in the garden. Praying. Or he told them that uh, I want you to wait here and pray while I go a little bit you know, ahead of you and pray. And they fell asleep. Peter was also that man that told Jesus, I will never deny you. No matter what anybody else does, I will never deny you. I will never forsake you. I will, I will die for you. And then it turned around that he was the exact one that denied him three times. He was cussing when people said, aren't you the one that was with Jesus? And he was just, no, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. But after that, after Jesus had risen from the dead, he restored Peter back. He forgave Peter. And in uh, John, the 21st chapter, yeah. verses 15 through 17, mm -hmm. it says, So when they were eating breakfast, right. Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, right. do you love me right. more than these? Right. And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you yeah. know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lamb. Yes. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He's checking him out now. Yes, he was. He said, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know I love you. Jesus said, Jesus answered and said, feed my sheep. Amen. See, this is what a shepherd is supposed to do, is feed the sheep. Yeah. He's not supposed to be feeding them hot dogs and, and uh, french fries or hamburgers or nothing like that no kind of uh, material food. He's supposed to be feeding them the word of God. And that's what we come over here for, is to feed you the word of God. Now this is healing class. This is why we're looking at this healing. Now, they, it says here in this first verse, praise God, that they went up. Peter and John went up together to the temple at our prayer. That's right. It says in uh, Acts the second chapter, if you just go back to that 46th verse, uh -huh. Acts 246, it says, So continuing daily with one accord in the temple, 
See, that's what they were doing. And breaking bread from house to house, mm -hmm. they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church those who should be saved. So this is what was going on with this New Testament church. People were getting saved, and right now we're going to see what else was going on. Now, prayer is very important. We've been teaching a series on, Lord, teach me how to pray, which I'll pick up this Sunday. We found out it's very important to pray all the time, to pray in love, to pray in faith, and to ask God in Jesus' name when you're praying, right? We also, in one of them lessons, uh, we said in John the 14th chapter, let's look at that real quick so we can get you together. John 14, Jesus says something here. In the 12th verse, John 14, 12, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me, the works that I do, he do also, he shall do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And we told y'all when we was teaching on prayer that that is not prayer. That is using the name of Jesus asking for something. What you're doing when you're asking for something in Jesus' name, that means that you are calling for, you are craving for, you're desiring and requesting Jesus to do something. And you're not asking or demanding God to do something. You're asking in Jesus' name that that sickness and that person will be leaving. If they got cancer, that cancer will leave. If they got some kind of coronavirus, that that coronavirus will be dried up and be gone. Amen? That's using the name of Jesus. But then we're going to prayer here in the book of Acts in this third chapter. And while they were going to prayer in that second Acts 3 verse 2 see how it reads see what happened here. It says, and a man who had been unable to walk from birth was care being carried along whom they used to sit down every day at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, so that he could beg alms from those entering the temple. So when he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he began asking them for coins. He was a beggar. He was a beggar. This man had been lame from his mother's womb. So all he thing he knew how to do was big. I mean, he had people that took him, carried him, and laid him at this temple because, see, they knew at the temple people were coming in and out. That was his job. His job was to sit there and beg for corn. And he did that no matter who it was. And I imagine that same man was sitting there when Jesus used to go to the temple. Because Jesus went to the temple a lot. Amen. Now in verse uh, 4 it says, in this third chapter, But Peter along with John stared at him intently and said, Look at us. Yes. Look at us. In Acts 3.12 of this same chapter, go down here a little bit, it says, And Peter, seeing this, said to the people, you men of Israel, why are you amazed at this? Why are you staring at us as though by our own power and godliness we have made this man walk? In the King James it says, in 
in the King We're James it says, so Peter, what are you talking about? this is Acts 3.12. I'm talking about the word look, he said, look at us. And that's what Peter told him, right? Look on us. So in Acts 3.12, it actually says in the King James, so when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, ye men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us, as though by our own power and good and godliness, we have made this man to walk. We're going to get into that on down the line. In verses 3 and 6 of the third chapter of Acts, I mean 5 and 6, it says, And the man began to pay attention to them, eagerly expecting to receive something from them, but Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. But what I do have, I give to you. In the name, authority, and power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, begin now to walk and go on walking. So what Peter is doing here is using the name of Jesus. He is requesting that Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that this power of God will be manifest in this crippled man. That's what he's requesting. To put it, you know, short. Now we see in um, 2 Corinthians, it says something here. This is Paul talking as far as about the silver and gold. Because it isn't that Peter and John didn't have no silver and gold. They didn't have it with them that day. Amen? Now when you look at 2 Corinthians, the 8th chapter, this is a chapter talking about giving. We're going to hit a couple of verses here. Verse uh, 8, 12. In the second Corinthians, the eighth chapter, verse 12, it says, Second Corinthians, what chapter? The eighth chapter, verse 12, it says, For if you eat, for if the eagerness to give is there, well, let's go up here a little bit. I missed the verse. Go up to the ninth verse. The ninth verse says, For you are recognizing more clearly the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, his astonishing kindness, his generosity, his gracious favor, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich, abundantly blessed. Jesus was rich. He left all that in heaven and came down here. He became poverty for us so that we could be rich. And then, you know, a lot of people say, well, I don't have no money to give. They're kind of like this poor, lame man. So he says in the 12th verse, for if the eagerness to give is there, it is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what he does not have. What does that mean? That means if you have a will to give something to God, that's what he's looking for. Your willingness, your eagerness to give to God something. And it's not based on according to what you have. You may not have that much money. I can't see. Pray. That's what he's saying. It's not based on according to what you have. Right. But it says, it's not, uh, and not according to what he does not have. So you may not have no money. Like Peter and John, they didn't have no silver or gold with them. But what they had, that's what they gave to this land man. You know what, not to break it off, but you know that's true. We, we've been up, we were under some pastors that were really had faith and believed like this. Mm -hmm. And you remember when we would need something in the church, they would uh, tell people to make a pledge. Right. And it seemed like we always came up with that money. Everybody did. 
Because they well, pledged in faith mm -hmm. that that's what they were going to do, and it was for God, you know, what they were doing. It was to help somebody, whether it was to feed somebody or whatever they were doing. And you pledged. See, this because is very you important have. that. And, and you still get. You may not have as much money as somebody else. Mm -hmm. This is why uh, God in his word says that you're supposed to give a tenth, mm -hmm. a tithe, right. what you do have. Yeah, bless that way, if everybody gives a tenth of what they do have, have everybody is given equally. Right. Yeah, Whether it's a tenth for a thousand dollars, or a tenth for one hundred thousand dollars, or a tenth of a dollar, or a tenth for ten dollars. Right, right, a tenth of a dollar. You're still giving you know, it to God. Right. And, and that's what He's looking at is your heart. And it's still equal to everybody else. We're right. at a million, it's still equal for the still equal. Ten. But what happens a lot of times, people that have a lot, they don't give a tithe. No, they don't. They give an offer. That's enough. <laughs> right. And they never get blessed. They don't. Now here in this third chapter, the seventh verse, it says That's my money. Mm -hmm. After he said, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he's using yeah. Jesus' back, name. Back in, in that sixth verse, he's using Jesus' name. And then in the seventh verse, then he Signs them by the right hand and with a firm grip and raised them up. And at once his feet and his ankles became strong and steady. Now, they were acting just like Jesus. Where did you just read him? He was reading out a second. That's, that's Acts. I was in the right now I'm back to Acts. Okay, you thought he was a chance to read it with you. Okay, well, we're in Acts, the third chapter. Keep your finger there. We probably won't be going no other places. Well, That's you know, nice. we don't know what the spirit gonna do here tonight. But anyway, what this is a perfect example of what Jesus was talking about in John the 14th chapter, that the works that he did, we will do the same works. Yeah, we will. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. This is exactly what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. They was right there listening to Jesus when right. he was saying that. Yeah. They were in the school of Jesus when he said that. Right. Just like you are being told right now that you're supposed to do greater works than what Jesus did. Because he said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. That means you have that same power. And as a believer, you don't have to turn here, but in Mark 16, 17, he said, and these signs, signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They shall speak with new tongues. This is, are you a believer? Amen. And see, a lot of people like to say, well, this was an apostle. Jesus anointed them to go out and heal the sick. Didn't he do that? That's exactly what he did. Jesus Christ. Well, he did. Yeah, he did. He did it in Luke. I mean, I got scripture for it. He told them to go out. Don't take no baggage or no sandals, or two pairs of sandals, or no two coats or no purse or nothing like that. And you know, go preach the kingdom of God and lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So they had experience in doing this. And a lot of people, that's why they like to say, well, that was Jesus healing people in the Gospels. And these are the apostles killing people in the book of Acts. But now, in the time we live in, healing has passed away because there's no more apostles. Do you ever hear that? And plus, you never know what God is going to do. Even in yourself. I don't know what he's going to tell me to say. But he 
said if you're a believer, you're supposed to be able to lay hands on the sick and they're supposed to recover. Now we saw Jesus do this with Peter's mother-in-law. Peter actually saw this with his mother-in-law. She had a fever. And Jesus, what he did, he took her by the hand and lifted her up. And immediately the fever left her. That was in Mark. And then in Luke, it says that he actually spoke to the fever. So this is an exact example. They spoke to this crippled man in the name of Jesus. And they took him by the hand and raised him up. So they acting just like Jesus. Right? They was told. We see here in the next verse, um, let's look at verse 8 in the book of Acts, the third chapter. And with a leap, he stood up and began to walk. And he went into the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. You know, when Jesus healed this man in the fifth chapter of John, this man who was sitting at the pool. He was up there by the temple too on one of those porches. And uh, Jesus asked him, do you want to be healed? And he went off. Well, I don't have nobody when the water is troubled to put me in. And before I can get there, another one steps in before me. A lot of people use excuses when it comes to healing. I don't have nobody to take me to the doctor. I don't have nobody to come over here and see me. I can't make it to church. Well, I know a woman that had an issue of blood. She wasn't even supposed to be out on the street, and she made it to Jesus. Amen? This is, you know, people, the reason that we're teaching healing so much on every Tuesday of every week because people have got a mindset, they have got a polluted, degenerated mind that is not God's will for them to be healed. The reason they have that because it's been taught on the pulpits for decade after decade after decade. And they got it in their mind. It's just like if you sit up and watch the news enough, or you listen, listen, sit up and watch a certain TV show too much, or you listen to a certain um, speaker on TV, what's going to happen to you? You're going to start believing what they're saying, and then eventually you're going to start talking like them. They're driving the faith right out of you. And what, it does. It do. It, that's what it's saying again. And what does it do? Drive faith right out of him. It takes faith to be healed. This crippled man had faith. Amen. Because when they said, look on us, he looked at him. Right. He was expecting to get something. Right. He wanted some money, but he was whatever he was going to give him, he was going to take. Right. So he took that healing. Right. Amen. Now in uh, verses 9 and 10, for that third chapter. I, I, the only reason I laugh is because some people are trying to push education on you and say you could do a lot better and have a lot more than just go to school and get all these degrees. And you still don't get nothing. We're going to get into that in, uh, in faith uh, class on Saturday. <laughs> education can only get you so far. That's right. You got to be in Christ. You got to be in God. That's what gets you far when you're in Christ Jesus. That you believe that He is your Lord and your Savior. He is Lord of Lord, Kings of Kings. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. It's only through Jesus Christ that you can get to God. That's why He said, when you pray, pray. My, our Father, right. who art in heaven, right. how be thy name. And then he says in the 16th chapter, when you ask the Father
Father in my name. He will do it. It's very important. You know, a lot of people say they like to get so technical. They say, well, in the Bible, uh, the King James says God, but in the, the Jewish Bible and in the Quran, it says Allah. It's the same God. Right. In the English translation, they didn't have a word for God. Right. So they use God with the big G. Right. We say it's our Father. Mm -hmm. And I say it's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, so you don't get it mixed up with none of them other gods. Right. It's the only true and real God. Right. This is who we stand behind. He is in front of us. Don't get in front of him. <laughs> no, you don't want to. Lord. And anyway, this man in this fifth chapter of John, he, he kept complaining about him, nobody put him in the water and all that. Right. Jesus told him to pick up your bed and walk. Just get up. <laughs> and he picked up his bed and started walking. Right. And he didn't, Jesus, you know, left him and the Jews asked him, well, why are you carrying your bed on the Sabbath day? He said, a man named Jesus told me to pick up my bed and walk. Oh, yes. So what Jesus did, he located him in the temple later on. And he told him, when Jesus found him in the temple, yeah. he said to him, see you have been made whole, sin no more, lest the worst thing come yes. upon you. worse on him. That's exactly what it See, a lot of people get healed and they go right back into that same lifestyle right. and then something them. worse comes up. Right. Let's look at this Acts third chapter, these uh, next last two verses. It says, uh, all the people saw him walking and praising God and they were recognizing him as the very man who usually sat begging yeah, for yeah. corns at the beautiful gate of the temple. Amen. And they were filled with wonder and amazing and were mystified, mystified at what had happened. This should be happening right now. Yes, it should. We're still living in the book of Acts as Jesus has gone. We're in the same dispensation of the church. That Peter and John was in the church. Right. If you read chapters 1 and 2, yeah, that's you'll see one. that's what it's talking about. Because in verse 2, I read you that, that the Lord adds to the church as such should be saved. So he's still adding to the church. He added this cripple man to the church. Now let's get some detail about this. Because when you're praising God, I'm going to read a couple of scriptures here. You don't have to... Praising God is very important when he does something for you. Give him the glory. You know, a lot of people like to say when, you know, when they get into a good position or the job or when they complete their college degree and go into a, an apprenticeship or whatever, they say, you know, I did this myself. They haven't did nothing themselves. It was only because of the grace of God that they made it through school. And it's only because of the grace of God that they got that position. Mm -hmm. And it's only because of the grace of God that they stay in that position. Right. They don't give God the glory at all. They give their self the glory. Right. I did this. I pulled myself up by my own bootstrap. They did no, you didn't. And you're supposed to be there for his purpose anyway. No, you didn't. Mm -hmm. That's the world's view. Yeah, now here in... Uh, let me read a couple of verses out of Psalms here. No. Get in the spirit. Psalm uh, 103. One of my crazy Psalms. Psalm 103. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. That's the way God wants us to praise him. Yeah. All that was within us. Right. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, yeah, that's right. that's who lot. forgives all my your mind. iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeemed your life from destruction, who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfied that mouth with good things, so that the youth is renewed like an eagle. That's the Lord we're talking about. Yeah. That is our Father. Yeah. 
In Psalm 107, verse 20, Psalm 107, verse 20, it says, Let them give thanks to the Lord. Well, let me go up to verse 20. It says, He sent His word and healed them and rescued them from their destruction. That's how people get rescued out of destruction, by His word, by Jesus. And you see, he sent the word. And then he says, uh, You don't pay that word no attention to anything that happens. It does. Some of them being catastrophes. Right. And it says here in the 21st verse, Let them give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness and for his wonderful acts to the children of man. And let them offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and speak of his deities. With shouts of joy. Amen. Amen. He want to be glorified and thanked. Honored. Amen. Now, let's look at something here. Yes, he does. Because this man was praising God, and they actually thought that Peter and John had did this. Right. They really did. But you know, when they was in church, they was constantly preaching and they needed to uh, repent of their sins and their wickedness because they wasn't recognized by the Lord. Here's what, um, go to the fourth chapter. Because he wouldn't do it for nothing. That's where I want to go. People still won't do it. They just don't recognize it. You say what? Because John, God, he ain't had it up. In the book of Acts. Because it is standing even in that last verse in Acts uh, 3, the 26th verse, it was, well, first of all, God raised up his servant Jesus and sent him to bless you by turning every one of you from your wicked ways. You know, just uh, wickedness. Well, we read down to verse 10. Yeah, we did. So, verse 11, let's read a little more. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. When Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look so honestly on us as though by our own power and holiness we have made this man to walk. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his son Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the Prince of Life whom God has raised from the dead wherefore we are his witnesses and in his name through faith in his name has made this man strong whom you see and know. The faith which is by him has Given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. That's what happened. And now, brother, he goes on to say, he runs it on down a little more. But here in the fourth chapter, uh, something that's important that we want to close up on here tonight. 4.13 of the book of Acts. I want you to see something here. Verses... Um, Y'all want to do some reading here? Uh, yeah, what verse? Verse 13 to 22, read that out of the book of uh, Acts, the fourth chapter. Chapter 4, verse 13 to 22. Okay, there we go. Well, let me make a comment here, because what happened when this happened, they actually um, came and got them. Yeah, there was many. They arrested them. Right. Because they oh, told them off. Oh, he, he was like preaching them. It says, uh, Now when the men of the San 
Yeah. Hey, 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 saw the confidence and boldness of Peter and John and grasped the fact that they were uneducated and untrained, ordinary men. They were astounded and began to recognize that they had been with Jesus. And seeing the man who had been healed standing there with them, they had nothing to say in reply. But after ordering them to step out of the council, they began to confer among themselves, saying, what are we to do with these men? For the fact that an extraordinary miracle has taken place through is public knowledge and clearly evident to all the residents of Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. Amen. But, Amen. but to keep it from spreading further among the people and the nation, let us sternly warn them not to speak again to anyone in this way. So they sent for them and commanded them not to speak as the representatives or teach at all in the name of Jesus, using him as their authority. But John and Peter replied to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you and obey you rather than God, you must judge for yourselves. For we on our part cannot stop telling people about what we have seen on earth. When the ruler and council members had threatened then further, they let them go, finding no way to punish them because of their fear of the people, for they were all praising and glorifying and honoring God for what had happened. Or the men to whom this sign of testing miracle, healing and had happened, was more than 40 years old. Amen. So, this happens nowadays. When you're preaching Jesus and you're giving all the glory to God and you're doing things in Jesus' name, they don't want you to speak in Jesus' name. The other two religions of the world, Islam and Jews. They don't want you to say, it's, be, it's in Jesus' name that I'm doing this. It's because of God. I don't want you to pray in Jesus' name. And Peter told them, hey. I'd rather obey God than obey a man. And you see, you got to get this into your, your, your uh, mind first. You got to renew your mind with the word of God, and you got to start saying what God is saying. And what happens when when you are born again? You have the Holy Spirit inside of you, right? And then the one reason why they were going to prayer because when you pray, you normally get filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. What that fear be gone? The fear goes away. Yeah. See, they were full of the Holy Spirit from the second chapter of Acts. But they were scared. They were full of the Holy Spirit. They, they were bold. Right. They spoke boldly, boldly in the name of Jesus. And they told them they wasn't going to stop speaking in the name of Jesus. Right. Don't care what you say. Right. Or what you do. The council, they and they couldn't deny it because the, they knew this man, this beggar that was sitting at the, well, the, the, the temple at the beautiful gate for 40 years. Right, they already knew it. Then. He had been there 40 years in that condition. Right, crippled. Uh, crippled. And people were carrying him to the temple right. every day. He was there every day. Right. Begging for corn. Right. And they say, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, stand up and start walking and keep on walking and smash his body and pull his foot up and boom. He got strength in his feet and his ankles and everything. He was walking and leaping and praising God and went on in the temple. And they couldn't deny it because they know he was crippled from his mother's womb, from birth. They didn't know what to do. So they told him, don't speak in the name of Jesus no more around here. They threatened him. Mm -hmm. 
Now look at verses 23 to 37. You want to read that, sister? I don't read it. 23 to 37. Okay, go ahead. Okay, and after Peter and John were released, they returned to their own people and reported everything that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. And that's, when, you, when somebody gets on you about something, what you need to do is get with your own people. So they can pray over you. So they can build you up. Right. Because a lot of tongue lashing a lot of times will will wear you down. Right. You know, somebody, you know, saying, don't do this, don't Make do this, you. are you crazy? Make What's wrong with you? You have lost your mind. You know, you about the ignorant person I ever saw in my life. Talking about in the name of Jesus. But they threatened that. They did. Okay, go ahead. And then it says, and, and when they heard it, they raised their voices together to God. See, they just mm -hmm. all start praying to God. Right. And said, O oh, sovereign Lord, having complete power and authority, it is you who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything that is in them, mm -hmm. who by the Holy Spirit, through the mouth of our father David, your servant said, why did these nations, Gentiles, become arrogant and rage? And the people despise brutal things against the Lord. The kings of the earth took their stand to attack, and the rulers were assembled together against the Lord and against his anointing, the Christ, the Messiah. For in this city there were gathered together against you, your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate along with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, to do whatever your hand and your purpose predestined before the creation of the world. Praise God. To a care and so without knowing it, they serve your purpose. Mm -hmm. And now, Lord, observe their threats. Mm -hmm. Take them into account and grant your bond servants may declare your message of salvation with great confidence. Why you extend your hand to heal and mm -hmm. signs wonders, attesting miracles, take place through the name and authority and the power of your holy servant and son Jesus. Mm -hmm. And when they had prayed, the place where they were meeting together was shaken, mm -hmm. a sign of God's presence. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with boldness and courage. Yes, sir. Now the companies of believers was of one heart mm -hmm. and soul, and not one of them claimed that anything belonged to him was exclusively his own, but everything was common properly and for the use of all. And with great ability and power, the apostles were continuously testifying to the re resurrection of the Lord Jesus in great grace. God's remarkable loving kindness and favor and all goodwill rested richly upon all. And there was not a needy person, get a load of that, not a needy person not among needy them. Person, right. Because those who were owners of land and houses were selling them and bringing the proceeds of the sales and placing the money down at the apostles' feet. And then it was distributed to everyone to each as anyone had a need of, to each as anyone had need. Mm -hmm. Now Joseph, a Levite, a native of Cyprus, was surnamed Barnabas, and the apostles, which translated means son of encouragement, sold a field belonging to him and bought the money and set it at the apostles' feet. So they didn't have a woman. This is that. one reason why there's so many denominations and so much division in the body of God, in the body of Jesus. We're part of the body of Christ. But Christ is the head of the church. Jesus is the head of the church. We are the body. What the devil has done, he has separated the body. And so that we can't get together to do nothing. That's Good example. People are oppressed. You got this over here, you got this one here. Oppression. You go out that door, they go out that door, they don't even talk to you. They don't even speak. It shouldn't be that way. 
we all should be walking in love. And see, if we can all get on one accord in Christ Jesus and stop worrying about who's going to be the teacher, who's going to be the pastor, who's going to be our spokesman and all of that. What the God did, he set up 12 apostles. 12 tribes. That means that everything had to go through 12 men before anything happened. Right. And he had anointed them 12 men. They were the called ones. They were the sent ones. And this is why people like to say nowadays, well, I am an apostle. Well, did you see Jesus Christ in the flesh? That's what makes you an apostle. That you saw Jesus Christ in the flesh. That's what makes you an apostle. Paul said that he saw him on the Damascus road. He appeared to him in a bright light. So he saw him. Right. So what testimony do you have that makes you an apostle? Are you just calling yourself an apostle or what? I'm going to let that alone. You know, people got to deal with that when they go before the Lord. They all got to stand before yeah. the judgment. So. so I thank you all for coming by, but uh, we're going to see that in the books of Acts, it wasn't just the apostles telling the people, there were deacons. There was actually lady telling people. So we're going to break up all of that stuff about when the last apostle died, he'll stop. We'll see y'all next week. I hope that helped you. It sure did help me.